I would like to introduce um, on behalf, and I think Bonnie and David, we all uh, really would like to all um, introduce Elfidia to the Dragon Week. Um, she came to us in a very different way. It was very unexpected. Um, she was basically just, um, she saw what we were doing here on Dragon Week and she was told that she needed to do something. And so she showed up, she contacted us and so she's here. So this is very impromptu. It wasn't planned. We just got it all figured out, I think like last night. And so um, we're very excited about this. And um, David, would you like to say anything? Bonnie, Jesse? Uh, I just think that it's one way to know that it's super meant when it happens just like out of nowhere in that way and everything lines up perfectly. It just means that it's it's like really important. And and I really feel that way. I'm, I feel really lucky to meet you, so. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I, I, I kind of want to say the same thing that Jesse did that, you know, this is all divinely guided. And that's how ever since we opened up this space for everyone in the new world, that's how it's been. And every single time they bring us another um, person that's going to come in and speak, we get blessed far more than we ever imagined. And we just are so blessed to have you there, here. And we thank you for coming. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I'm really grateful of, um, of you taking the time out, being called to to share some of your love and insights. I mean, you've been working with dragons for a long time. Your beautiful dragon skulls in front of you, like just blow my mind. I can just feel their personalities. I'm already in love with them. And um, just so happy to have you here. Can't wait for what you're gonna share with us. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank and you. Alpina, she, she run, you, you have what you call a dragon wisdom school. And um, so that's what you, that's one, only one of the things that you do. And so I think the best thing is for you to introduce yourself and tell us all about you and how you got to where you are today. And just let everybody know, because we have a lot of people here that have never met you before. And so just kind of get them up to speed. And then I'm really excited to find out, I want to hear about these these dragon skulls that are sitting in front of you. I can't wait. And then whatever you're going to be talking about, I'm excited. Oh, great. Well, thank you. Thank you for everybody. And thank you to those watching, uh, not live, because I know um, lots of you said you'll watch it on the the repeat. So yeah, I'm. my name's Alfidia Arara. I am based in Scotland. Uh, so we are in South Scotland in a valley called Merlindale. So it's steeped in the earth magic of Merlin, the wizard. Some of you will have heard of him from the Arthurian uh, legends. So I have been on this path now since I'm a walking soul. So that means that Fiona was here first. Um, I was Fiona Murray and Fiona left in 2004 and I, Alfidia, came in and um, my work with dragons, as um, you were saying, uh, it's just one part of what I do. I'm a channel, so what I do is I am able to channel information from star beings to fairies to angels, dragons, um, unicorns, Ascended Masters, Goddesses, and I work a lot with uh, Mary Magdalene, the Ma Mary Magdalene Energy, and I run big earth healing retreats, which we just finished one. Obviously, we couldn't do it down in Glastonbury as was planned because we're in lockdown. So over 50 of us did it all around the world internationally online, and this was with Mary Magdalene and the Elementals and the Dragons and we did it at Roslyn Glen, so you may have heard of Roslyn Chapel, it was in the Da Vinci Code, in the Dan Brown book about Mary Magdalene, that's just half an hour, for half an hour north of where we stay, so go to Roslyn Glen a lot and go on to the Mary Magdalene line, and so my mission with the, the dragons, as I was um, saying earlier, was I'd already set up my company, Elemental Beings. Um, previously, I was I worked in politics. I was an environment, rural affairs policy advisor. 
Um, I did politics, geography and environmental science and geology, so hence I love my crystals, at university. And uh, when I was 23, I was left bedridden, unable to move for over a year and a half. The doctors just didn't know what was wrong with me. I was unable to tolerate any artificial light for three years, so I spent three years in the dark. Uh, talk about the dark man, night of the soul. I did the dark night of the soul. <laughs> And um, it was during that time that I walked into body and had my spiritual wake up. And I wrote my first book. Uh, my first book, Messages from Nature's Guardians, was all about me meeting the different fairies and the elementals and the sylphs and the, the mermaids. And I got so many amazing artists did um, beautiful channeled artwork, which I can't even is find pictures of but um you know it's always the way isn't it when you open the book up there's that's not one of the channeled ones but that's one of the judy mistrangelo i love her so the book's got artwork through it as well and that came out in 2009 and it wasn't until i had a baby in 2012 and i was on maternity leave and the dragons started coming to me and they said we want an online wisdom school a place where people can come and find out about dragons and get information about them and nobody was doing dragons back in 2013 you know they were just sort of coming in and so we set up the dragon wisdom school the website is dragonwisdomschool.org and it's got so much free information on it about how to communicate with dragons who the dragons are, the different types, invocations to help you connect with the different types. It's got information on earth healing with dragons. Um, obviously, my all my back catalogue of workshops, because that's really my speciality, is I channel these workshops that are life-changing, transforming, to help people um, in their lives, get on their spiritual path, and in the case of the dragons, it's a lot of earth healing work as well. Some of them are as, as cheap as £20 going up to, obviously, if you do the retreats, then they're in the hundreds. But it's accessible for everybody. And you can sign up to join the Wisdom School. It's free. You just put your email in. Um, obviously, it's been really busy during lockdown for me. I've had to homeschool like all of you would. And then the company just grew so much. My staff still can't come in. Um, Scotland's going into further lockdown tonight at six o'clock. Not our area. It's like all the area round about us and we've been doing all this high vibration work in the borders and it's still level two. We're, we're in the lowest, uh, the lowest restriction apart from the islands. Scotland's got a lot of islands and they're level one because obviously nobody has COVID on the islands. They stopped the ferries and things. So um, yeah, so we're the lowest tier really in, in our area. So it just shows that when you do this high vibration work, it, it can you know make a difference and you can really get the dragons to help you with your earth healing work so um yeah the dragons come to you when you're ready to work with them they're incredibly powerful uh, they come to people sometimes it's their first spiritual awakening is to see a dragon but for most people they've been on the path a while before the dragons you know show up and um, people really decide i want to to work with the the dragons and for me, I, I knew about the dragons through my husband. My husband's a, a Merlin Vortex wizard and um, I met him 14 years ago. He's the, the doctor that cured my eyes. He's a, a homeopath and a healer and that's how I met him. But obviously it was all aligning so that the two of us came together. And when I was writing my first book, um, I was writ wrote the chapter about the salamanders, the fire spirits. And I was asking about the dragons and they said that, you know, the dragons were in, were, you know, were asleep in essence. There weren't dragons to communicate with. The earth dragons weren't awake at that time. And then that became part of my path to take groups of people to the sacred sites all around the United Kingdom and to activate the ley lines, the dragon lines, and to return dragons to the earth. And people from all over the world started to find the website and started to come in to help birth the new dragons my next dragon workshop which isn't uh, advertised yet because i don't get much notice as a channel i'm now down to sometimes two or three days notice for for a workshop but people show up you know it's getting shorter and shorter but um i took a bit i took sick last month um energy shifts and so i had to not i didn't do a dragon workshop last month but i'm just waiting for them because i missed that window um 
the, the next workshop they want me to bring forward is the Dragon Temple workshop and to get everybody around the world reactivating the dragon temples and their location and creating dragon temples. These are energy structures which contain the dragon wisdom and knowledge. But, I mean, who are the dragons? Well, dragons fall into a sort of realm between the elemental realm. They're, they are tied to an element. You get earth dragons, fire dragons, air dragons, water dragons, ether dragons, the five main elements. But you get violet flame dragons, love dragons, um, solar dragons, lunar dragons. There's so many different types. So they're, they're kind of lumped into the divic realm. Okay, so that that realm of mystery magic, the realm of, of the earth. But you get your galactic dragons as well. So we've worked with Syrian dragons, we've worked with Pleiadian dragons. Um, so there's there's a whole whole world of dragons, just like the angelic world. You've got your Archangel, Michael, Raphael, Zadkiel. There's all the different types of dragons and they are a consciousness, a consciousness of transformation and change. And they exist deep within the earth as well. The last dragon workshop I did was an inner earth dragon workshop. And it was really powerful to help us just to connect with the consciousness. I mean, Mother Gaia, she's a consciousness. She's, she's alive. And there's many realms within the earth as well that we in our physical 3D bodies can't access. But the dragons are not, um, they're not third dimensional. They may show up in the third dimension if they want your attention, but they can't hold that frequency for very long now. So they live in the higher dimensions, the more ethereal dimensions. But just like the angels, you have to call them. They'll come into your life, but they don't have permission to override your free will. So you have to give them permission to work with you. And when you do just say, and it's as simple as dragons, please come, please help me, please connect with me. That is a simple invocation. My website has got so many more specific invocations that you can say, totally free to access. Um, if you want to call specific types in, we've got free meditations on there as well. And it's really about welcoming them into your life. And most of the work I do with them is through the dragon skulls, which uh, is what the main part of the talk's going to be, but through meditation as well. And so, you know, it's it's up to you how you want to communicate with them, you know, and uh, like the angels as well, they'll communicate with you in different ways, depending on if you're profoundly clairsentient, you'll feel the dragon energy around you, maybe you're clairvoyant, you can see the dragons or you get visions, dreams. Um, so if you join my wisdom school, you get a little free ebook that takes you on a quiz to find out what is your sixth sense, strongest way that the dragons are going to communicate with you. Because there's no point spending all your time trying to see a dragon when since clairvoyance is not your strongest sixth sense. Actually, you're a clear audience, so they want to talk to you. They want to communicate to you through words and hearing them. Or maybe they want to communicate with you through feeling, you know. So the quiz really helps people to figure out what way the dragons are trying to talk to them. So, you know, if you sign up, as I say, it's free. There's no obligation. You just go into the mailing list and you uh, get this free ebook, And then you'll get certain special offers coming out. So, for example, we're just waiting to do a sale on all the dragon back workshops we were going to do it this week we just ran out of time we've been so busy so we'll launch that next week so that um you know we're heading back into lockdown it could be a long winter so it'll give you all an opportunity to work with the different dragons and you have lots of meditations and courses and they do a lot of teaching through me as well they do attunements as well i sell these dragon ascension spheres which are a set of eight crystals and you uh, work with them in meditation to be attuned to the particular dragons to get healings and so I do that in my workshop um, workshops as well and I also work with the dragon sprays my friend makes these um, dragon odor sprays and um, she's in Scotland so there's like earth air water fire ether I didn't bring the spirit one out actually, but um, the air as well. So, you know, I work with these daily as well, spraying them around my aura. So I was guided to use the fire dragons. So this one's got ginger, nutmeg, patchouli, sage. So it's really autumnal, Christmassy and fiery, you know, just to bring the energy of the, the dragon energy. And it's got crystal elixirs in it as well. And she channels through dragon light language. So 
Um, she makes these up for the Wisdom School. They're up on the website too. But as I say, my speciality is working with the, the Dragon Skulls. So um, I'll introduce you to Refundus, who is the first big dragon that I, I became the guardian of. Refundus is an amazing 10 inch black obsidian skull. It's been in Stonehenge, been to Glastonbury, Avebury, been up to Calnash, been to all the major stone circles in the, the UK, up Glastonbury Tor. And Refundus is, um, is an earth healing dragon. He's so powerful, so protective. Um, so I also do these hour dragon healings. You can book um, an hour one-to-one -one session with, it's just Anka. We need to get Refundus up. He's finally agreed that he'll do one-to-one -one healings with people. Um, so people book them and then I channel through a personal message about what work's been done. They are really, really popular. Um, as well, but um, Anka is my largest dragon. Oh, she's heavy. So she is made of Scottish serpentine. This is also known as um, well, Iona Greenstone, which is the famous Iona. But oh, I would run retreats there every two years. Um, normally I go every year, not this year, obviously. But um, so I to sit her on my shoulder because she's so heavy. Um, Anka is the big dragon, and she's going to do a little healing for you all today. I'm going to get healing from Anka, and she's going to bring forward a channeling as well. So she's the one that wants to speak to us all. So she's obviously an earth healing dragon too, but she's a dragon of the heart. So serpentine, Scottish serpentine is all about heart opening the island of Iona off of the other island of Mull, the west coast of Scotland. Uh, it's a beautiful heart portal. Uh, it's a pilgrimage place. People come from all over the world to come to Iona. And um, yes, it's Anka that wants to wants to come forward and do the healing. But let's just talk about the dragons. Most people who work with me will own at least a little three inch dragon skull. Um, that's sort of good starter size for people. Um, this one's a beautiful Unikite one. This one's actually looking for a guardian. So it's obviously maybe going to find it through this one because it wanted to come out. But Unikite, Jasper, great for the heart, great for the sacral chakra too. But, you know, so if you see the dragon, it's got a crystalline head, but it's also got an etheric body. Okay, so if you're clairvoyant enough, you might be able to see the dragon's etheric body. And certainly when you hold a dragon skull, you can feel their etheric body. And they have a tail that will go in and do, you know, healing on different parts of your body. A few years ago, I channeled a, a dragon, a, a dragon healing workshop and a dragon skull workshop. A refresher is due to come, so that's definitely the pipeline to do another dragon skull full day workshop with the dragons because they, they want that. But um, so you're not just when you're holding your dragon skull, you're not just holding the crystal head. You're working with the energy body as well. It's in this one's in my aura. And uh, I specialize in crystal skulls, that's my thing. So I've got big, massive crystal skulls. I teach people how to work with the crystal skulls. And when the dragon skulls appeared, I had to ask my geologist for two years to birth these dragons. For two years, he was like, oh no, nobody will buy them, they're so expensive. And I nagged and nagged and nagged at him to uh, find a carver. And then he phoned me from Tucson, from the big crystal fair in Tucson said, I found you a dragon carver. And that's where Refundus was the showpiece because the carver takes out a big piece to try and get, you know, um, geologists and crystal wholesalers to, to want to get, use their services. And so that is how Refundus came to me. He was the showpiece at the show. And well, now they're, they're quite popular. They're still not that easy to come by, but I sort of specialize in getting unique crystals. My geologist is really good at uh, finding unique crystals ethically. And um, I've got a tiny little, this is the smallest dragon I have. It's a Merlinite. It's a one and a half inch Merlinite. And um, I had such a waiting list for Merlinite dragons because it's so hard to get them. And Merlinite, this type of Merlinite comes from Turkey. And trying to get it out of Turkey through customs to get it carved on the tiny little island in the, um, 
well, it's the China Sea, I suppose it is, the little island the carvers are on. They're master carvers. It's a family that do it. Anyway, they're the bit left over, so they did me a tiny little dragon. So I've kept this one for myself, and this is a really small one. But Merlinite is obviously a lot of people who work with me, they like to work with the Merlin Earth Magic Energy. So the Merlinite dragons, and Merlin is very associated with the dragons. They, they were bespoke dragons. Um, so yeah people put orders in with me i get them carved obviously it takes a bit longer now because of covid but yeah if people want a specific crystal i can commission for them to be charged and it's a bit like you know they just want to be birthed that's the thing is they they, they want to come into crystalline form they want to work with people and they have their own specialities as well so if you go on to the Dragon Wisdom School, you'll see I've actually just finished channeling the latest batch and what their a small part of their mission is, the general topic they want to work on, just to help people to find the right dragon ally for them. So, you know, they're a tool. They're a tool to help us connect with the dragons. Obviously, they've got high frequency energy. So I go to bed at night cuddling a dragon or I have them on my bedside table. I carry them about with me take them to sacred sites and sit and meditate with them, of course, as well. And then I do group transmissions. So uh, you can follow me on Facebook, Alfidia Arara Kenchington on Facebook or join the Dragon Wisdom School group on Facebook. And I do free, um, I do free talks on Facebook and then we'll do a crystal skull healing or a dragon skull healing like a, a mini version of what I'm going to do with you um, today and really they are here because they want to help us in the ascension process they do a lot of earth healing work as well i've got so many earth healers who work with me and they take the dragon skulls out to areas of choked ley lines so if you live in a city the ley lines the energy lines are going to be really choked there so healers they go out they do the activation they just place the dragon on the ground for five minutes ten minutes whatever length of time it takes for the dragon to clean that area up and then they move on to another location with their dragon. So they're a really powerful earth healing tool as well. And of course, dragons are highly protective beings. And they are, of course, in the Chinese culture, they're associated with abundance and wealth as well. And they really help us to shift any of our blocks, to shift anything that's in our, our way. So they're great for ego dismantlement or health issues or financial issues or you just don't know what to do in your life just call the dragons in ask them to give you guidance and you know inspiration on the path as well and um yeah i just i'm a massive fan they are very powerful i have overdosed on dragon energy so i, I do warn people about that you know make sure you ground yourself after you've worked with them make sure you pace yourself as well when you work with them it's all about knowing your own limits just like a yoga class your yoga teacher says do what is right for you don't do what i'm telling you if you if you're not at that place today it's the same with the dragons you know they work they work with us very intuitively so a lot of the work i do is to help people open up their sixth sense their own intuitive abilities because we're all master souls returned and we're all here with these gifts and talents. We just have to find our way of, of finding them and reclaiming them. And that's a big part of my mission here on Earth is to gather the clans, as the dragons say. And that's not only the dragon clans. I'm in Scotland. We're all about clans. It is about the lightworker clans and to bring people together and to get us to all be a bridge between the, the different realms. So... Before we go on and do some healing and meditation work, I could take questions at this point if there's things that people would like to know, and then we could go and do our little healing and channeling. If anybody wants to let me know if there's questions. You might need to unmute yourself, whoever's, I don't know if Dave is there or if. Yeah, I'm just looking, um, so we got, um... Fini is truly amazing. I took her web webinar. Uh, she was uh, then she's a channel, a teacher of immense proportion. Just going through here. Uh, someone was saying as soon as I called them in, they came in a huge way. Oh, that was Jesse. Oh, and then uh, Dina took your workshop with Metatron. Okay. Uh, that was really impactful. She'll never forget it. Um, and 
Um, yeah, so Gina's talking about how they just showed up in the clouds one day. And um, is it uh, Iona holds a huge meaning in my life? Uh, was it Iona? Uh, Jesse was saying, you mentioned I or was it Lona? Iona, so Iona, I-O-N-E, it's, uh, it's an island, it's a Scottish island, and it's, uh, it's a place of sort of spirituality pilgrimage ever since the day dot type thing, but um, it's kind of famous for the, the place that Christianity came in to Scotland or to, you know, the UK, but really it was a Druid stronghold. So this was an island that's associated with the Druids. It was a Druid library. So of course the library is in the stones and the rocks and the land. Um, it's believed that Mary Magdalene traveled there after the crucifixion as well with Lady Sarah. So it ties into all the Essene and the Magdalene movement work as well there. But really what it is, is a, it's a, a portal into the heart of the earth. So. When you sail, you have to sail to get to it. It's an island. And when you sail across from the main island of Mull, which is a big island um, for a Scottish island, it's quite a long island. It takes about an hour and a half to drive from one end of the island to the other. And then you go across the Sound of Iona. You feel it. You feel it about halfway through. You feel. I always, if I'm on a retreat group, say, let me know when you think you've entered the portal. And they always get it like, oh, we're in it now. Because you, you feel it. Your heart just bursts open. And you're just like, wow. And, you know, it's such a popular tourist destination. I mean, most people just go, go across for a day, walk to the um, abbey, walk back, and they're blasted. They don't know what's happened. But those of us who know about the magic of Iona, we go, we stay. You know, people pilgrimage there. It is If you want to open your heart and, and heart heal, um, it is one of the key places to, to visit and it is just, yeah, it's it's a phenomenal island and it's in a lot of people's hearts because it is a heart portal. It's one of the portals into the heart of Mother Earth. I think uh, we're going to have to go on an astral travel there with Jesse. Yeah. And um, I'll take you to Iona. It's, it's beautiful. Dina says, um, she says something about uh, eye activation from the dragon. She was saying, can you talk about the eye activation she had. I don't know if it's something you had or it's in, it's in the questions. It says, uh, I have been having an eye activation from the dragons. Can she talk about the eye activation she had? Does she mean third eye, do you think? Oh, that's what I, yeah, I'm thinking, you know, the dragons do activate the third eye. Um, so your third eye, it's the center of your forehead. It's your portal into your past life, so your future life and into the other realms as well and the dragons are, are great for activating it because most of us are not that clairvoyant because we have blocks from past lives from beliefs patterns we've taken on in this life like it's wrong to see into other realms or just we're not keeping our chakra clean enough so the dragons are uh yep yeah, ask the dragons to activate your your third eye and the dragon skulls so for example this if you wanted to work with that lapis this is a lapis lazuli dragon skull and lapis lazuli is an amazing crystal to work with to um, activate your third eye chakra to activate your clairvoyance um, and this is a beautiful four inch one uh, and you would just yeah so what i do in the transmissions is i get people to connect i mean i'll get you to do it when we do our transmission so the dragon's third eye is this horn here in the in the carvings i don't know if you can see um the, the horn there yeah. and so your huh? third eye to the dragon's horn is like a bridge and you can consciously when you hold your dragon skull just intend to create this bridge of light between the dragon's third eye and your third eye and then just go into meditation and just allow the dragon energy to to run on you i mean i'm going to take you on a meditation we're going to do this in a minute so you know I'll teach you how to do it um, when we do it live as a group. And oh, it's easier for you to see the big dragon than it is the small one. So um, we'll work with Anka and we'll do a third eye activation. If that answers you get your skulls, like when people order their skulls from you, 
Um, does it come with the dragon energy that's meant for them, or do they have to set intentions to connect the their dragon energy to the crystal skull? Um, no. So basically, what happens is that the I've activated them all, so the consciousness is already in the dragons. So if you work with crystal skulls, you'll know that your crystal skull can just sort of go dead for a while, and it's just like, oh, it's not doing anything; it's just sat here. That's because the crystal skull consciousness comes in and out of of the matrix. But the dragons, when I channeled the dragon uh, skull workshop a few years ago, they said that once they're in the crystal, once they've hooked in, that's them. They're always present. They're like always there. So they don't leave that space, right? But um, what I do when you buy a dragon from the Dragon Wisdom School, you get a meditation. It's just a short five, five to ten minute meditation MP3 and we email it out to you and um, it's just me i channeled a guided meditation and it's just to help you connect in with your skull get its name get messages so i have this little meditation that i put out uh, which you get free uh, with one of our dragon skulls and it's just to help you so it, it's i always they're a bit like pets the dragons it's a bit like having a pet dog right and so they, they come into your life and they come with their own personality and you know you might decide to get another pet dog and that might be the same breed but it's got a totally different personality and the way you handle it is completely different but if you miss them if they're not there and if you go up onto the hill and you can't find your dragon skull because you put it down somewhere and you're like where did i put it you start to panic when you can't find your dog it's the same with the dragons they have that effect on you so they have that energy where they're very attached to you just like a dog and um you know sometimes they do disappear i mean my husband left did you not leave one on a pier in Ireland? There was a few. Yeah, he's, he's, my husband's like, he takes all these dragons and he puts them down places. He used to work on the I'd West Coast of Ireland. I don't know where the pier is. Maybe I could go find Yeah, it. I know. You just don't know where that pier is. You can trot along. It's probably about 12 years ago now. Did you go by any chance? And the ring of Kerry. No, it, it was. Uh, it no, was, it was Kel Donegal. Donegal, yeah. Oh, it was just more for Donegal. Yeah. And so they sometimes do disappear. Do you know, I'm missing a dragon. I'm missing a Kambaba. It came in. I got these Kambaba. These are like inner earth dragons. So these are Kambaba Jasper. They're, they're quite rare Jasper. And I got a batch carved. So, you know, because I'm getting them hand carved for me, I have to buy them in batches. So maybe a batch of 20 or a batch of 30. And um, so they, they arrived and I or my staff, I don't know who did it, product coded them. But I always photograph them, because I just like doing that. I like holding the dragons, connecting to each one, and I always take the photographs before they're going on the shop. Well, one of them just dematerialized. We're in lockdown, nobody's coming in, so it's not been stolen, right? And it's not like, you know, it just dematerialized. So I'm just waiting for it to reappear. So we have a few, which my accountant is like, um, so this is on the stock team, but it doesn't exist, and I'm like, it doesn't exist in the physical at the moment, but it'll resurface at some point. So it still has to sit in stock. You can't write it off as a bad debt yet. I've got, I had to change accountants. So I've got a guy that just gets me now. Um, because I was just... It could be lost in another timeline. Like maybe a timeline... Exactly. I mean, they, they will reappear. I mean, I'll tell you a story. Um, it just happened recently. I went to Karnak. I don't know if in America you know all about Karnak, but Karnak is in France. It's in northwest France, and it is like massive stone. It's not actually circles. It's like stone rows and corridors. So it's kind of in that whole Britannia thing where down the west coast of Britain, um, you don't have them so much in Ireland, but Britain, Wales, England, and down to the west coast of France and Brittany, they're obviously all the stone uh, the megalithic time the stone circles were being built and i went i went last july last minute again i got the message you're going to karnak and i couldn't see how we could go as a family because i have we have an eight-year-old and obviously a ringus and then my friend he just he's an author and um, he sort of writes about fairies and elementals he said i'm going to france i'm driving across and i was like okay i'm coming so in the end, I flew out to France and he picked me up, but he drove across, so we had a vehicle. And I said, we're doing Karnak, we're doing Sharts, and we're, we'd ended up doing Merlin, uh, Merlin's Well and stuff as well. But anyway, we went there 
And I had this um, emerald. I just activated the emerald ray, returned it to Earth um, at the summer solstice. So three weeks before, two weeks before. Uh, Calnash, massive big stone complex on Lewis, one of the Western Isles of Scotland. And so I took this crystal and I took this Merkaba and it went to all the sacred sites in France and then brought it back, took it to Glastonbury, Avebury, the largest stone circle in the world, Salisbury Cathedral, Winchester Cathedral, um, up Glastonbury Tor, did, did all the sacred sites in South England, Roslyn, Glen, and then at the winter solstice of 2019, we went to the three, I did a, a workshop and I think about 15 people came and we went to Fortingall, which is another really magical, mystical place where the Christ line and the Mary line, ley lines cross in Scotland. And we went there to do a big activation and the weather was torrential. It was it was getting on to one of our worst and we've done a lot of bad weather air healing things anyway it was such bad weather it was freezing Arangus was really really ill i think now he had COVID in hindsight but um i jumped the fence because we had to climb over this this gate and by the time i got back i was missing my two crystals and it was such bad weather it was so muddy and i was just like just surrender they obviously did all their work and they wanted to uh, they wanted to do work in Fortingall and they're gone, you know. So I was pretty devastated. My ego part of me was pretty devastated to lose them, but I let it go, I let it go. I didn't really think about it. And then I started to um consciously do some earth healing work for the last two months with the Sasquatch. And I'm doing a Sasquatch workshop tomorrow. Um, so we're doing emotional healing with the Sasquatch because I always thought the Sasquatch, the Bigfoot people, were just in America. But I'm sorry, I need a drink. Turns out in Scotland, we call them the tree people. And there's 500 of them in our valley. And there's a whole pile in the forest just across, across the road. We live out on a farm. And they started to work with me. And so I was going up every day at 12 noon, leaving them gifts and communicating with them and learning from them and they wanted to bring this workshop through so I agreed to that and then the next day I was going down to the river and I was going to do some earth healing at the river and I thought there's something strange in my pocket and I put my hand in and it was my emerald and my Merkaba and they returned it after like because I've been doing all this earth healing and gifts and you know gifting them and being of service, they actually returned my two crystals, which, you know, I've been wearing, it's a different coat and I've been wearing it all the time. And so I did a big post on that. You can read about that on the website and you can see the crystals. So crystals can rematerialize, you know, you just have to just ask for them to come back, but you might have to do some service <laughs> to get them back. But, you know, so yeah, the, the dragons can dematerialize and rematerialize. So, um, yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> so is there any, what time are we on? We're about 15 minutes ago. Is there any more questions or do you want to do some healing now? Can I just say something real quick? Um, I make, I make my organite dragons through, um, and I just want to say that everything you have said has, I'm getting so emotional, <laughs> has validated what I experienced when, um, when they come through me into the pieces and I'm just really grateful for this experience because sometimes I think I'm going crazy, you know, because, <laughs> Oh, don't think that just get in touch with me. And I'll be like, Oh yeah, that's happened to me. If you feel you're going a bit mad, I'm a good reference point. <laughs> oh, and it's just so reassuring to hear you say the same things that I experienced when I, when I, when I make the pieces, um, I just want to say thank you so much because Everything you've said is just so true, and I go through this. I go go through it too, you know. And just thank you is so validating. I, I such an invaluable experience listening to you talk right now. So I just wanted to say thank you, and you've just validated everything that I go through when I channel the their personalities. There, it's just so true, and they don't leave. And I take pictures too, and I say, "Fly away, my babies." <laughs> magic out in the world you know and but I keep pictures and I keep an album because that you know it comes from somewhere like you know it's 
I don't know. Anyway, I'm babbling, so I just wanted to say thank you so much. Thank you so much. Did oh, you know? no problem. And yeah, no, just just connect me on Facebook. We'll keep in touch and you can, you know, send me your dragon pictures and any experiences you have. It's not a problem. My world is pretty crazy. I have a, I have a lovely girl who works for me. She's only, what, 23. And she came to me as a gap year student, um, Kira, and she... Her mum's like my one one of my best friends and she does all my work and so Kira was having her gap year and she needed some work and I was like, perfect, come and work for me. And now she's finished her degree and she trained as a sound engineer. So lockdown hit and she uh, she didn't have much work and I was like, great, come and work for me. Our Angus needs a break, you know. And then she, she said to me when she was 17, oh, you really should like, you know, make a video of your life a bit like the oh what was it the osborns at that time and then now she works for us again and she's like oh my gosh you need to do a netflix show of just how your bonkers your life is every day these experiences just happen but it's when you live in the flow and as long as you're in the flow and you're able to accept the flow and there's yeah there's challenges but it's just about remembering to stay connected and the dragons are always with us and you know i'll go through i'll go for a week or two and i won't really work with dragon energy because i'm working with so many other energies and then i'll come back to them so you know they don't you don't have to like every day be oh i haven't spoken to my dragons day but you might go through six months of every single day you want to work with the dragons or for a year or two years or three years all your life is dragons but you know they flow, think of their bodies, they, they flow, they fly, they, they move, and it, it, we're quite static on Earth, we're quite stuck in our physical bodies and things, and dragons are great, I mean, I used to go, and what I'm missing in lockdown, because my health spa closed down, is I used to weekly go to a class called Dance of the Dragon, and it was with Chi Ball, I um, don't know oh. if you, you know them, the like, sort of Tai Chi meditation balls, and you had to swish your tail with the dragon, and it was a proper Chinese dragon class, and I just went every week, because it made me connect with the, the dragons, and yeah, I'm glad I haven't been able to find an online class to, Zoom class to do with the Chi Ball of Dance of the Dragon, but you know, Know, they'll come into you whatever way they want to weave whether it's artwork through whether it's through meditation whether it's through dancing and moving or meditating or healing you know it's just about allowing yourself to be open and not having humans are very conditioned and once you give up your conditioning I mean I lay in my bed not able to move for over a year could you imagine being in your bedroom for a year I was out for four days to go to hospital to come back and be told there's nothing we can do to help you i didn't even get out of the room to go to the toilet right so can you get your head around being stuck in one room you just you just can't can you if you're a fit well person you cannot imagine what that is like and people say to me how did you do it and i'm like you just surrender you can't move anyway so you either get mentally ill because you 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 can't cope or i used to be an athlete so i was a sprinter i was in you know, I was in the Scottish Athletic Squad, so by, although I was just like a teenager, when you're at that stage of competition, you're actually getting some psychology, you're getting sports psychology. And because I'd had sports psychology, I knew that I had to live every day in the moment and I had to have a plan, an exit plan, to execute my recovery. And I just lay there knowing somebody was coming to get me better. I didn't believe in God, I didn't believe in any of that. But I just knew that somebody was coming and I just had to keep myself focused and like, you know, not allow my mind to think about what I was missing out or not allow my mind to think, oh my goodness, am I going to die? Just to celebrate the fact somebody fed me that day and like it was my mum or my sister or my dad or the fact I could listen to the radio for an hour because I couldn't even listen to music because that was... Um, that was too overstimulating for the meninges in my brain. So I had a lot of time to think, um, but I just was living in a different realm at that time. And I think that's when I was getting all my training. And in my first book, um, you know, Messages from Nature's Guardians, I, I talk about in the channeling, I can't remember who it was now, I wrote it so long ago, but one of the deities, I think it was Archangel Metatron said that, you know, because you chose to stay on earth, because I had a, a near death experience, I was in a coma and um, my parents had to bring me back round. But I got, I was out of body and I got the choice whether to live or die. Um, and I chose to live. And because I chose to live, the like extra support team came in and 
so my psychic gifts opened up even more clearly because I had to be very intuitive to recover from that place. You know, I intuited the food I needed, I intuited how much exercise I could do, down to how many minutes I could listen to the radio or an audio book. The only way to recover from that was through intuition. Some days I couldn't listen to as much music or any at all and you just had to and that's how I learned to trust my intuition and that's how I learned how to be an intuitive healer and you know was in that dark night of the soul point and so hopefully none of you have to go through the experience I did to do that. That's why I teach people how to do it in a way that is not as bad as something to do what I did but you know um, it's all about being intuitive when you're you're working with this energy for sure. So what we, what we do now, will we do the healing just now? I think so. I think I'm getting the, the nod. I see Rochelle sitting there. I'm like, who's that person beaming out at me? <laughs> so Rochelle, Rochelle's in California, but she does all my workshops. And um, I just felt all this energy coming out. And I was like, who's beaming that energy to me? And it was Rochelle. So it's lovely to see you, Rochelle. You've worked with Anka a lot, of course. So you, can, you know Anka very well. Um, so this is Anka. And Anka is actually the balance of the masculine and feminine. So she's not, I often talk about her as a she, but she's, she is um, a he as well. So she's totally androgynous. This side is the, the masculine side, of course, the right side. So this has got some of the matrix in it, the grey. And then the female side of her, her left side, has got most of the serpentine energy within. So, um She's going to now do a live channeling, but I'm losing my voice a bit, so I better uh, have a drink first. Um, so I'm just going to channel, which just means I'll let the dragon speak through me. That means that mm, the dragon is the one talking. I just allow the dragon's voice to come through me. If you've not experienced live channeling before, you can get a reaction to it just if the energy hits you. So just maybe like to ground yourselves at the moment and just um, go into your heart space just to prepare yourself. Um, she may also bring through what we call dragon light language, which will sound like I'm talking goggle to gook. Okay, so it, it won't be words in English, it'll be codes and frequencies. Um, and that's just the dragons, that's this draconian language. Um, and then we will do a little healing with her to balance our energies and but I'll let her talk about the healing she wants to give you all and um, then you when she's doing the healing on you you're just connecting remember from your third eye to her third eye I'll hold her this way so that you can see her horn but you'll feel the energy running on you if you are clear sainted if you think I'm not feeling anything don't panic the energy is working it's just you have a bit of a block for whatever reason to the energy coming through but know it's working on your multi-dimensional self so you will be receiving it so just focus on your breath and just imagine breathing in and down into your heart and back up and just imagine love because she's the dragon of love she's bringing all this beautiful scottish serpentine love soft energy in to help you at this time okay Right, Anka, we're going to speak today. It's a while since I've channeled you. Because I'm not doing one-to-one -one healings with her at the moment, so normally I'm channeling her every day for people. Greetings, greetings, greetings. I am Anka. I am delighted to connect with you. Those who are connecting lie. And those who are connecting in the future, I am opening up a portal. For you to receive this in the now moment. The reason I wished to come forward at this time is that earth is changing. The energies are speeding up at this point. As you are moving towards the powerful solstice point on December, now 
You are all earth workers. You are all present here with me in this moment. Because part of your earth's mission is to birth the new earth codes into being. To create the higher conscious human and to seed into humanity's consciousness the higher timeline trajectory a trajectory of love trajectory of inner peace and a trajectory of oneness and unity but first humanity must go through its own individualized form of returning to unity, the unification of the soul. And this is why so many are called to work with the dragon realm at this time. For this is your natural inner process to move out of separation. The separation of the feminine, the masculine, for the holy child is now birthed. The Trinity consciousness reactivated on earth in 2019. Many souls pioneered this work. Many souls are also pioneering the inner resurrection. You will know where you are on your own, each individual journeys of inner resurrection. For some, this may be confusing. It may be terminology you have not heard before. But your soul knows the process where it signed up for it. The inner resurrection is the resurrection out of the darkness and into the light. Honouring the shadow and the ego for where it has got you, what it has taught you. But recognising that it no longer is a necessity for you to learn and to grow through. You have done that journey. But it is the echo of that journey that is coming up for you as the timelines collapse. So this portal that we are in at this moment is deep. The scorpionic energies are still affecting you. But the energy will change. As if you have shed a skin akin to the snake as the kundalini consciousness is rising again on the earth once more as well as having a kundalini deep within yourselves there is also the kundalini of the earth the rainbow serpent who the first nation peoples have guarded the secrets of but as you all are moving now to unity consciousness, the rainbow dragons are starting to connect with you all, starting to stir within you the remembrance of the process you are embarked upon. It is futile fighting it. And yet some will. Some in the public eye are stubbornly butting their heads against their own invisible wall. Instead of moving into surrender and then seeing the wall is not there. It is an illusion. So you have the choice now whether to step onto this higher timeline trajectory the choice is yours. Some of you may feel fear at these words. 
Some of you may feel excitement. A feeling of, this is it. Remembering that. You are your own power source. You are a beautiful spark of divine light, carrying a consciousness so sacred, so exquisite and so perfect. So I wish to offer you this healing to help you see the perfection within, to honor the perfection within, and to acknowledge the perfection within. I begin the healing transmission now. Hurari aki asi are, ho shono ali ati aki ati o sui, ho anaki a poru guru aye o, moru ganda ni sira, pro tsu gani ako tu si, shali a baba gadi aki aki o, fro gana ti asa, pari aki alua. Hokatia, Shoria Kadia Moya, Yawai, Odia, do I, but a Gadia Lue, Miakada, Soruku. It's just taking your awareness, your breath. And just allowing Anka's beautiful energy to connect in with you as you enjoy her healing transmission now.
Okay, so Anka just said the transmission's complete. Obviously, she can run a lot longer transmissions than that, but <laughs> she does our transmissions, but um, yeah, just allowing yourself to ground back down, just disconnecting your energy. I was losing my voice in that, I don't know why, but she was healing my throat, so I think things were coming up in my throat there. Guilt and grief were what I was having to shift. In my workshops, I always share what I'm going through, um, helps other people as well. So I was getting, that was the next part to vibrations to release from my ego self. But I thought that was a really good message from her. I'll actually get, get that typed up and put on the Dragon Wisdom School site because it was an interesting message about the energies of this, this time that we're going through. But I hope you've all enjoyed the little talk on the dragons and little healings. If you join the Dragon Wisdom School org on Facebook and follow, friend me or follow me as Alfidia Rara Kensington on Facebook, then I weekly usually do a session where I do a free skull healing um, and we do like a short one like that and we do a, a weekly hour one as well. So if you enjoy that experience, then that's something for you. Um, the only other thing is a lot of people say, how do I choose my dragon skull? Well, they choose you really. But uh, I do help people, so if, if you think, oh, I really want one, but I don't know which one's for me, just get in touch, and I tune in to them, and then I say it's this one because of why, and so I help people that way as well, find their dragons, and people will say, oh, you're so busy, I don't want to bother you, but it's not a problem if I just usually instantly get it. Yep, you want a dragon, I know your one, it's there. I, the dragon, it sort of lights up. The only way I can describe it is the big cell for them and it's sort of they just glow when their guardian appears, they sort of activate and this light radiates around them. So, you know, they know where they're going to. Um they just sit patiently with me for a while <laughs> until they sometimes, you know, I've had one that sat with me for two years. That was my longest one until its uh, its guardian showed up. But um yeah, so thank you for inviting me to come on and well done you guys for pulling together this great group that you're doing and if anybody's got any questions feel free to type it in the chat box and I, I should be able to read that after I think. Um, I can still access that even when we come off can't I or I can do it when I host a meeting I'm not sure afterwards but I can read through but people can ask me questions or comments in the Dragon Wisdom School group on Facebook that's not a problem if you want to contact us that way and yeah, I'll hand you back to yeah. David or to whoever so, wants. So magical, so magical, so amazing. Um, that your dragon there had this really cool um, frequency ring thing that was coming through my um, aura. It was like it was like high high frequency, just a nice general energy clear, clearing, as well as my heart was palpitating like crazy. It was so fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, thank you so much for doing this for everybody here. Thank you. Oh, thank you for inviting me. I I just want to say thank you too from the bottom of our heart. I just think you were amazing and the energy was just loving and caring. And I want to thank the dragons for coming too for the healing. And um, we just hope that this is the beginning of a relationship. With, with oh, for sure. I can talk family. on all manner of stuff, so it's really not a problem. <laughs> all right. I just want to say something right. really quickly. Um, uh, this has been happening like throughout the whole thing. Um, back in August when we started doing this, actually even farther back, um, I would kept all the stuff that the, the my guides keep telling me, you have to do this, you have to do this, you have to do this. And we set up this group and we got this thing going. And um, it's just like today, like everything kind of like came in front of my eyes while you were talking and while you were doing everything because I was like, how am I going to do this? <laughs> and my guides told me that they will send the people, like the people will come exactly when they're needed. And you just showed up with that just exactly what mm -hmm. they happen. And I just wanted to confirm that and just tell everybody that that it's just like, wow, it's amazing to me today. <laughs> and I'm so excited and happy and really looking forward to the future um, and getting to know you a little bit better. And I'm definitely going to be checking out your Dragon, Dragon Wisdom School 
and all of the things. I'll be reading your books and all of that. And I can't wait for your um, the new book that you're writing as well, your dragon book that you're going to be writing. That you're are you are you is it going to be done soon or? Well, as Rochelle will know, because she's been with it, it's been on the go for a few years. No, the problem is I have about five books halfway written. So basically the plan is now that I have, um, I say to them always, give me a deadline. I always hit my deadlines. You know, that's why I was good in politics. I always hit the deadlines. And so, yeah, I now am, um, it is, uh, well, uh, they keep wanting to go to a publisher as well, whereas if a self-publisher would be out a lot quicker. But yeah, so um, it might not be out for a while if it goes to the publisher because they take at least a year. But um, I'm working on a Crystal Skull book, which would be self-published too. So yeah, hopefully, but it's not imminent. You know, hopefully next year it'll be out, but it's not. It's not going to be the next couple of weeks. Basically, put it that way. You sound a lot like me. I have like about 10 irons in the fire. Like I have so many projects and so many things. I'm writing books too. <laughs> They're never going to get finished, I don't think. <laughs> well, don't say that because that's the book. You will get them finished. <laughs> and that's, that's the never that stops it. So you just say, they will get finished. That is why I say, yeah, I know they're happening. They're on the go. There's a chapter written. They are happening because that then gives the energy and opportunity to birth itself. But yeah. I'm looking forward to this winter doing it. That's the plan. Well, the lockdown is really good. Uh, we're in Ireland. We've been in the lockdown. We've on our we're on our fourth week of this like total lockdown, and wow. I don't know. Doesn't look like they're going to lift it anytime soon. <laughs> Yes, that's right. I follow, I don't know if you follow this man, he's maybe big in Ireland. Um, he's called Rory Stories and he's on Facebook and he does these comedy sketches. And I just found him not so long ago and it's, he is hilarious. And that's, I've been sort of following the Irish lockdown through this Rory Stories guy because he does his... I thought you were maybe out of it by now, but I, I'll go and check out his latest videos so you're still... Thing. The best, the best thing he he does one. I think he does one about the. See, we have this thing where you can't buy clothes, like at Tesco's and things like that. Yeah. Everything is not non-essential except for like socks and underwear <laughs> and okay. clothes, right? And so this he go. I don't know if it's him or somebody goes in and um, literally tries to go shopping in Tesco's in their underwear and their socks and their. Mask. I saw that, and it's like, no, you said clothes were not essential. That was a good one. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just so funny it's so funny that was a good one i saw that one that was really because whale whale stood the same um scotland we are just going into lockdown tonight at six o'clock but not us so um my area is not but um yeah all to the west of us locks down at six o'clock tonight so yeah i don't know how long i don't know how far off we are six o'clock but in half an hour's time then that's it. Yeah. Again. Just take the time. Anybody that's stuck in lockdown, just take the time and just like do whatever it is that you always said that you were going to do if you had time. <laughs> you know? That's why we're doing another sale for people because we did a lockdown sale in the May and then people are like, well, you do another one because you've got 600 courses. I can't afford to buy them all full price. So can you just do another sale? So we thought, right, a lot of folk are going to lockdown. I don't know what's happening in America. I don't know if you guys are going into a second lockdown. I heard that New York had shut its schools and stuff, so I think New York's going into a lockdown, is it not, or something? But um... I think they're all getting they're all so far. They're starting to put up more rules, and they're starting they're heading that way, but they haven't locked us down yet. Right? Yeah, they're like rolling slowly, rolling back. You know, going back like yeah. we went total lockdown and then we moved forward and now we're like kind of slowly moving backwards again is what's yeah. happening here near new york city mm -hmm. basically what's happening in we'll Canada? See. <laughs> i'm planning for a total lockdown to happen yeah you know i'm yeah. everybody just sit tight and enjoy yourselves <laughs> yeah exactly do the spiritual well thank you guys for having me on thank you so and um yeah i'll um keep connecting in with your group and keep feel free to connect in with my group and yeah if there's any other topics that you you uh, would want a speaker on, you can just always let me know. We're and, going to be doing yeah. um, a few themed, like I think we've decided that we're going to try to do like a themed week um, once a month. And I think the next one is about angels because it's Christmas time and we thought that would be good for angels. 
but there's like um, Lemurians, like there's like the, this is things that have been like kind of in the air, like a, a themed week around Lemurians and um yeah i've done a lot of lemurian workshops lemurian angel workshops i do a monthly angel meditation as well i haven't done one this month i'll need to get that in but yeah um just let me know yeah so there's going to be yeah, something okay. going on all the time thank you so, so much thank you yeah okay the live stream is up so thank you very much everybody for coming in and we'll be putting this up on the replay in the um in the new earth ac youtube channel and um i'll i'll i'll, I'll i can't ever say your name alfidia <laughs> alfidia <laughs> um she did this out of her heart she did this from her heart and she did this without any expectation and so i'm going to be putting a link up inside of the description in the new earth ac um, YouTube channel and if you feel from your heart that you would like to um, give her a little bit of love back please do so if the the link will be there and just do whatever um, is in your heart whatever you would like to give back it's not necessary there's no expectation but if you if you really got a lot out of this and you really want to do something please um, give her a little love 